at the moment in Denmark, we are not discussing integration anymore. We are aiming at 100%. We have kind of shifted from this discussion on how much and if to just how and how fast. To be able to use the green electricity means a change in technology, heat pumps, transportation, industrial processes, where you get rid of fossil fuels and you can use the green electricity instead. Today, Denmark meets half of its electricity demand with wind and solar, which are weather-dependent and provide fluctuating energy. Altogether, 75% of Denmark's power comes from renewable sources, with a goal to reach 100% by 2030. In the Danish energy system, when we have been integrating renewable energy, we've increased the flexibility on the rest of the production side. And in, in a Danish case, that's mainly the combined heat and power plants, which became much more flexible in their operational patterns in order to fit wind power. The rest of the electricity system were actually okay with wind power coming in seeing uh, opportunities in uh, delivering the flexibility into the system that could enable wind power to be there. When you're looking at integration of renewable energy into the electricity grid of Denmark, the strong transmission grid, the interaction and strong interconnection with the neighboring countries has been the key until now. The market setup we had in the Nordic countries and then later on in a European setting has been a vital part of uh, us being able to integrate renewables. The development of the electricity market, it started with our Nordic neighbors uh, in the 90s. A collaboration on how to utilize the synergies between hydropower and wind power. Integration with the district heating sector is very important in the Danish context. It's uh, electric boilers when it makes economic sense. And it's also definitely the new big heat pumps being installed. We have to couple these energy sectors. We need to use more electricity in the district heating. We need to use electricity in the transport sector. Instead of stopping the wind turbines, when there is more than enough electricity, then we could perhaps use electricity to power to X to produce hydrogen, and that way we can store it. There has been this focus on electricity as one system, gas as another system, and I could continue heat as a third system in, in silos. But if we actually want to go to 100%, we have to break down some of these silos and then see the different energy systems as someone who can actually enable this transition. This grid has been constructed with very low load factor, with very high reserves, to enable one of the highest securities of electricity supply in the world. The whole of Europe, we have to discuss infrastructure in a new way, not only electricity infrastructure, but actually also the synergies to, for example, hydrogen infrastructure and how that can help transport, you could say, electricity through molecules in, in pipelines in, instead. The local dialogue and participation is very, very important for this to be a success. And we have proposed to have a local climate council in every municipality. In the climate council, we are setting up a small group that are going to work with how to construct a model so that the locals can get more value out of it. You have to involve local people. You have to involve the municipalities much more than today. It's important to set targets in uh, how to integrate renewables into the system. The next step is sharing experience, sharing failure, and then from that, try to develop common solutions in order for us to reach the long-term targets.